And what's going on? It's Boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com. Just had a member request. I want to go ahead and get into uh, understanding the grid a lot better. I had a, uh, a new member who actually was coming from the NPC. So he wanted to learn how to get the NPC style of swing with machine. So let's go ahead and set up our project right quick. All right. So the first thing I would suggest to you would be to, if you're going to learn how to loop in a machine, make sure you watch our video on how to arrange your scenes and patterns. Okay. So to understand the grid on machine, it works like this. Let me go ahead and zoom out of this pattern a little bit better so you can see this loop and you have a quick record icon right here. Now this is going to serve two functions. Actually one function in quick record is going to help you set up preset pattern links. Then it has like another function where you can set up the grid which is going to help you loop your patterns. So it might confuse you because, okay, let's say if I click on this icon here and drag it, notice how when I drag it to the left, it jumped way to the fourth bar. Okay. It went from four bars to eight bars. That's because it's activating that quick pattern length. That's that's down there on the quick record because it's set to quick. Okay. So don't let that confuse you. Now, if I jump down here, you notice how when I do it again, it goes a little bit smaller. It goes down to the second bar, then to the first bar. So that's why that jumps around like that because of that quick record feature. That's basically what you have to understand on that. Okay. Now let's say if I put this on a bar, okay, we're now looping by bars. Okay. Now, if I do it again, let's say I put it on half notes. Let me just uh, move like this here. It moves a little bit finer. You see that? If I put it on, let's say eighth, it gets a little bit even more finer. Okay. Of course, sixteenths, which is extremely fine, all the way down to if you, you know you put it on off, which basically is kind of like it's really free. You know, if you look up there, you see how small that pattern is getting. Okay, and you can loop anywhere in your uh, your scenes also. And it works like that with the scenes too. Now, for example, let me, um, let me focus on one scene right quick. Let's go ahead and do this one right here. Now, when you zoom all the way in on your scenes, you see right there, it's showing the beats. You see how I get a little more intricate. Okay. So let's say for example, It's hard to do because the way it zooms in is hard to see and I want to make it easy for you to see. So let's say if I want to loop this scene, okay, you see how fine that's going. That's because it's off. So if I'm zoomed in like this, you see that it's like literally nothing right there. You know, I wouldn't even know what to even call that. <laughs> that is like, that's like so fine, but you know, you see how it moves free. Now, if I go down here and let's say I put it on 16th, you see how it moves a little more intricate. It's more quantized. In other words, it's quantizing by sixteenths. If I put it on, let's say eighths. Okay. It jumps a little bit bigger. See how big it's jumping a little bit bigger. Okay. With the 16 beats. So let's say if I put it on sixteenths, it jumps a little bit more. And let's say if I put it on a whole bar, a lot more free. And again, that's hard to see. So let me zoom in on that. So I can see those bars a little bit better. Okay. There we go. Now you see it's jumping by bars like that there. So let's say if I zoom in out of that, let's go ahead and uh, set it like this here and let's go ahead. Put that back on 16th. So you also can trigger your scenes from your hardware controller also. So let's say, for example, this first scene here is saying visit, but let's say if this said intro like this. Okay. If you look on your MK one, you press down the scene button and the first button on the left above the top screen, you can lock in that screen and where it says position, you can move that position. See how I'm moving that. I don't, I don't even have to even click and drag that. I could just turn that first, that first knob. See how it moves around. And if I touch on my pads, see how it's going through the scenes. But that gets more into like live playing and retriggering your scenes. Like for example, let's say if I turn to retrigger a uh, feature on here, 
and I wanted to re-trigger it by 16th, for example, and then I was to press play. Now when I tap on the pads, So you get, it's more like, almost like mixing. So the more I tap on the pad, the more I can mix with that, play around with that, almost like a turntable DJ effect. Now, if I put it on scenes like this, let's go back to the first one and play. And then let's say if I touch another pad like this, see how it didn't do anything? Like no matter what I'm doing over here, it's waiting for that scene. So I could just like, let's say if I put it way over here on the third, on the third scene like that, I have to wait for that to uh, play before it jumps over to that scene. See how it jumped over there. Turn this re-trigger off. See how it's playing more freely now? So if there was a part over here, let's say it was like a lot more quiet. Okay, then let's say if I put it on fourths. Let me go back to this first part so you can see this a lot better. Let me. Okay, that's basically how that feature works. I just want to make sure that you understood that. So that's why I did that right quick. So sorry if I took a little, a little longer on that. But um, let's go ahead and get into the uh, the slots. And you can set up your grid notes from down here. And this will determine how you can quantize your notes. Again, from one bar to 64 triplets. That's for your steps. Because let's say, for example, if I put it on, let's say 16 like this here, and I was to right click here, you have a nudge grid here. Here's your steps. Okay, step, step two, step four, step eight, and step 16. So let's say if I went down to this little icon here, now you can do this from the hardware controller too, but just for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna do it like this to make it a lot uh, quicker. And as you can see right here, how fine that's moving. Okay, because I have this grid on. Okay, now if I turn this grid off, it moves a lot freer. See how free that's moving? So let's say if I put it on a whole bar and then I tried to move this, See how it jumps? I don't get that little, I don't get that extra free play in there by 16. See how the, the grid in the background changed? Right here, I could put it on 16th notes. If I go right here, let's say I put it on 64 triplets, which is a, a different kind of time signature. I have to zoom in a lot more. Okay, I get even more. Okay, I get more beats like that. So let's say, for example, if I turned it off like this here. Now, let me zoom in on that. It's hard to uh, get it in there, but you see, it's even more finer. You see that? I'm getting like way in between the beats when it's off because I can put it anywhere in the time signature like that. So let's say if I turned this completely off, for example like this here. Again, that works the same up here. I can get anywhere. 
and it's zooming is like I'm doing it from the software. So it's hard for me to I think that's the most I can zoom in on that scene right there. I could I could loop anywhere in the scene. And which brings another good point because you can also loop anywhere from the starting point also. So your starting points can be uh, manipulated as well as the uh the ending points. You know, I can overlap the starting and end points like this here, which is crazy, you know, but that's more control. You know, I like a lot of control of my drums. So when I seen that feature, I fell in love with it in case you, you know, again, for example, let's say if I if I needed more beats and I went like this here, you notice how, okay, now I got 16 little uh, measures right there before the uh, the second bar right there or 16 beats. You see that? So you can get more slots, you know, get in there and, you, you know, if you really want to get really intricate. OK, so that should help you. As far as getting your drums quantized in a way that, you, you know, you can get more slots, you know, if you're used to that NPC field, then it gets to other areas, you know, when you adjust your swing. Now, the swing on here doesn't work like the NPC. Like I think the NPC defaults to what, 50 percent. Um, That 50 percent right here would be way too much on machine. You know, you're going to have to play with that. Um, from what I hear from some producers, some say they like to keep it around 11 and 17, depending on how they get it set up because on the sound level, it has another one. Okay. Where you can come in here and adjust your swing from here. And here's your, here's your swing cycles right here. So depending on your time signature and you know, what type of music you're making is what's going to determine the swing. So I can't give you one set swing format. Okay. So yeah, man, that's pretty much it, man. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, hit me up. You know, if it's not jazzing in, in your mind, you know, this way, let me know. Maybe I can make another video and we can break it down another way to make it a lot more easier to understand. And, you know, also up here, you have a MIDI scene change. You know, here's the source. If I want to use my machine controller, you know, if I want to, you know, change it up by MIDI note, you know, also have some program changes here. But um, I wouldn't worry about this right now. You know, unless you're really big on switching up your scenes and stuff like that using MIDI. Um, but for right now, being that you knew, I would say this tutorial video should be a big help. You know, rewind it over, take a look at it. And once you understand that, you'll understand, you know, how to get in here again. Look at the other video. You see how to arrange, you know, your patterns, you know, because you can duplicate patterns and, you know, get in there and, and, and change them up. As I'm doing here, let me. OK, you see how that pattern up there is changing because I have some preset patterns in here. You know, if I put a blank pattern here, you know, it's blank. You know, you have to determine the length and all that good stuff. You know, and that's what's going to determine your patterns. And you just think of your scenes basically as a sequencer. Your, your scenes, they sequence your patterns. OK, so you come down here, you know, you you put your patterns in however you want them. And that's pretty much how that works, man. Again, if you have any questions or concerns, just hit me up. It's your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com. Be sure to come by the website, www.VIPSoundLab.com. We have a basic membership that's only nine bucks. It's a one-time fee, and we do not charge monthly fees. And each month we give out free drum kits, free control editor templates, uh, things of that nature. Uh, we have a lot of session files, a lot of templates, and a lot of goodies that we give out each month.